you see any ways that a minister has helped you or a missionary? Read the words there. I think I have been touched in every way by these um, um, by these words about our pastors and our missionaries as well. Um, I pray that you will not just put the little pad in the now. Please take it with you and pray about our offering that we're going to take in just two weeks. The 19th we'll be taking the RMM offering for the retired ministers and missionaries. Thank you. And I'm 
and I'm so blessed to have all of you as my church family and care about me as much as I care about all of you. You mean the world to me. Uh, thank you for your prayers and your cards and, and your concerns for my recovery, and it, it has gone well, and I appreciate that very much. One other thing, I have a prayer request for a friend of mine I went to school with. Her name is Barbara Eastburn. She has been in intensive care at Memorial Hospital for five weeks now. Uh, don't know what the issues are, but God does. So uh, keep her in your prayers, please. Thank you. Anybody else have a phrase? Okay. Uh, just three prayer requests. You can give it to me in your prayers. You can read it. Uh, there are many, I guess, I'm not going to do all of them in your prayers. And we need to go back to your prayers. Are there any other prayer requests for praises? And just keep Eileen in your prayer. Yeah, right now she's not feeling good. She's been on the weather since Wednesday. Got a low-grade fever and a cough. She can't shake. Just keep Eileen in your prayer, please. Everlasting light. 
that Jesus had chose to come. And what we celebrate today is what comes about. The change that comes about because he chose to be a light in the midst of the darkness. Wherever you are today, may we find the light shining on us. And may we say, even if today isn't my cheeriest day, even if today isn't my greatest day, the Lord is with me. And he is comforting us and he is leading us to be his people. Let's give our lives to him this morning. Let's pray. Lord, some days the darkness is easier to behold with our eyes and our senses than your light is. So Lord, this morning we ask that your spirit would come upon us and that it would enlighten our lives. That it would lift us up, even if it's but for a brief moment, to be released from this pain, the struggle, the burden of uh, the things that are going on in our world and in our lives. And to see you. To see your light persistent and ever-present in the midst of a world that for thousands of years hasn't wanted it. hasn't welcomed it. but Lord we are the people that do welcome you so shine in the midst of us that every part of our lives that needs to be illuminated and exposed will be so in the light of your presence and that we would not fear to confess our sins. Because you are a gracious and compassionate and forgiving God. Lord, forgive us this day. May the measure of our forgiveness be the measure which we give to others to be forgiven. For your scriptures tell us that where we go to forgive, there is forgiveness. Where we go not to forgive, there is not forgiveness. Oh Lord, may we not forget that power that has been given to us because of the presence of your Spirit in our lives. Help us to be people of forgiveness. Not just to receive it, but people who give it. Lord, descend upon our lives and heal our frail and weak bodies. Touch our aching bones. Touch our tense muscles. Touch the places that are deep in our hearts and our minds that often don't exhibit themselves through physical symptoms. Lord, make us whole today, that we may walk again in the light of your presence. And Lord, send forth your word upon us to fill us and overfill us, so that we may tell of the good things that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do. Lord, we celebrate you today as a God of healing. But we celebrate you as a God that is ever present among us. Walking us through our journeys with cancer, through surgeries, through illness. Walking with us in our struggles in our families. Walking with us in the midst of our struggles in the economy of this world which is breaking. And Lord, we pray that you might walk with those who are in places of violence today. Especially those who are suffering innocently because of the aggression of others. Lord, bring peace to those places. 
We also pray for our region, for the staff, for the camp, for Rebecca, for the transitions that are taking place. There's so much uncertainty, and yet we know with confidence in our hearts that you are certain. We know that your goodness will prevail. And so in the times of our waiting, Lord, I pray that you would give us patience. I pray that you would give us strength. I pray for courage. That whatever life is being produced, and we cannot see it, Lord, that, Lord, you will help us to know it sooner than later. Help us to see it or perceive it and help us to celebrate. Because even when things in this world transition and die, yet, Lord, newness of life comes. Because you are the author, the sustainer, and the giver of life itself. Lord, we pray that you might be our God. We give our lives to be your people today. In your precious and holy name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Let us give him praise for the things he has given through the words of the gospel. Spirit who is from God, 
that we may understand what God has free given to us. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his words. Would you stand, please, and join me as we sing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. It is on page 539 in your hymnal.
be my theme and glory. To tell the old story of Jesus and his love. And yet, it's so difficult to tell that story in our lives. We come to the communion table today, and ours, like so many others, have those words in remembrance of me. And then we can fall into the trap to believe that the word for remembrance only means to recall what has happened in the past. The purpose of the table is always not only to remind us of the past, but to remind us that the one we proclaim, the one who's always the story, the one who's love, we may have encountered. It is a story that continues to be told as long as his people choose to tell the story. Now remember, this is not just a story about once upon a time, but it's a story about now, and it encompasses the future glory to which we are preparing to receive. The recognition that Jesus loved us, that today, in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of our world, in the midst of our praise, Jesus continues to love us. So that one day in the world will know fully, along with us, that God, through Jesus Christ, and in our spirit, has always loved the world. John 3.17 reminds us Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He didn't come to curse it. <coughs> but he came to love. And the table is how he chose to love the world. Through the brokenness of his body and the shedding of his blood. So that when he cried out on the cross, Father, for everyone watching today, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Forgive them, for they do not understand it. For those that would be proclaimed to have led him to that place, for those standing in the crowd weeping because they were losing their master and their Lord, their guide in this world. For those that were there for entertainment purposes. Jesus is crying his Lord forgive them. For they don't understand. That Jesus came to bless the world. And he blessed us immensely. Through the brokenness of his body and the shedding of his blood. And because of that, grace and mercy and forgiveness is within our reach. But it's something we must grasp for every day. That we must take up our cross and bear it. That we must carry burdens in this life. That we must behold darkness. None of us likes winter. None of us likes, let's be honest, none of us likes daylight savings time. Because it always gives us just a little bit of dark, more darkness at the beginning of the day, doesn't it? It makes it harder to get up. Even the upcoming time change is going to put us in darkness for a little more for a little while longer. So let's not be fooled. Even in the midst of that, the light is coming. And last week we looked at the first beginning of Matthew chapter 5, and it's filled with a whole lot of words, but one that is most important. 
Makarios in Greek. Blessed. And he lists out and he confirms upon them. He doesn't just teach them in the sense of put this in your mind. He literally blesses the poor in spirit. He literally blesses those who are in mourning at that time. Whose lives are weighed down by grief and trouble and strife from those whose lives have been pushed to the side, have been oppressed. Whose lives are very difficult because they lived in a world that didn't care about. Jesus says, I've come to bless them. And the story we remember today is where that blessing, what he received for that blessing. Because let's be honest, he disrupted the political and the religious world of the day. He disrupted. They would spend a lifetime saying, how dare you spend so much time with these people? How dare you spend the time with the sick, with the poor, with the sinners? Jesus, you're one of us. You should be spending your time with us. And then Jesus says to them, while the disciples are hearing, it is you that are the salt of the earth. And if you lose your saltiness, what good are you? Because you can't gain it back again. You are no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. And it's you who are the light of the world. A city on a hill can't be hidden. So why is it that you put it under a bowl Instead, put it on a stand, for then it will give light to everyone who is in your house and in your presence. I ask you, let your light shine before all mankind, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And knowing who was in the crowd, who was listening on the side, he says, I do not want you to believe for one moment I came to abolish the law. I didn't come to abolish it. I came to fulfill it. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of heaven will be of any means, will by any means disappear from the law until everything in it is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same, they will be called least in the kingdom of God. But whoever practices, whoever teaches and lives out these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you certainly have no place in the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord have a blessing to read of his words. We don't really need to say much about that, do we? I love to tell the story of unseen things Jesus is calling his disciples today to tell the story. He would urge them after he is gone to continue to tell the story of a gracious and merciful and unrelenting God whose forgiveness has been poured out.
Release them from captivity. Release them from their burdens. Release them from the obligation of pleasing this world through worldly means. It has been done. Jesus will go on to tell a story that says, pursuing the things of this earth, you will never find that. You will never find grace and mercy and the forgiveness of God through those things. They're valuable. They bring importance to you. They help you live. Thanks be to God. But they won't give you what you're looking for. tells his disciples, and neither will the law, because the law is powerless. It can't give you what you're wanting it to give you. Let's measure yourself by the law. Okay, let's measure yourself by the law. 
For every single thing you do not do that is commanded, your <coughs> sin will be released in the kingdom of heaven. It will be the last. But every commandment you keep, the measure will be very good. Sometimes you get it in chunks and somebody puts on the label it's sea salt. 
Sure, sure enough, if you've eaten sea salt, it's, it's a lot saltier than, it's very, very salty. Uh, more than table salt is. But there's, it's amazing how many different varieties of salt and its potency to have that salty brown flavor. And it reminds me, when Jesus looks at us, our English translations don't do well. Because when Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, they would have known, but we have to struggle with it. Really what Jesus is saying is, you all are the salt of the earth. And each of us are in our own variety. And you can go out and tell people in your world that your pastor told you to be salty. But I don't mean it in the sense of being angry, irritable. <coughs> but sometimes we get sometimes we get caught. And we stop telling the story simply because we look and we say, well, look at the successful church down the road in another community. They're a lot bigger. They have a lot more resources. They this, this, this. I guess they're a lot saltier than we are. Or at least their salt is better than our salt. And Paul in 1 Corinthians says, I've made one thing my objective and one thing only. To know Christ and Him crucified. Where people lose their saltiness, where they lose their variety, is when they think that we, when we begin to think that we have to be the same. When we have to have the same measure of success. Well, that is true if our measure of success is Christ and Christ crucified. Because that is the measure of heaven. That is the measure of the mercy and the grace to which we are called. So Sister Carol, Sister Janet, let me encourage you to live inside of the saltiness that you have been made because of the mercy and grace of God. For Sister Janet, it's her tenacity to care for her family. To have a schedule she'd like to do on her own, but yet knowing that her family needs her. And she does it. Tell the story there. I'm picking on Janet today. She sits in the front row. Now she's going to be in the back row. <laughs> you don't have to be eloquent with words. Paul said, I didn't come to you with eloquence and earthly wisdom. I didn't come to convince you. I simply came to tell the story of the Jesus who met me on the road and completely changed my life. It wasn't Paul who met Jesus. It was Jesus who met Paul. May we find our saltiness in the world. And even in the face of a world that doesn't want it. Let us say, but that doesn't mean I won't shine my delight of what Jesus has done. Lord, lift us up today to be your salt and your light. And while we find delight in your law, in your words, in your commandments, Lord, 
May we find the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness that emerges because of those things. May we not fall into the trap of thinking that if we just kept all the rules, your mercy and your grace would be better. But may we walk our lives in response to the truth that you have already forgiven and redeemed us. You've already forgiven and redeemed the world. And let us call people to remember that by coming to this day. Make us your salt and your light. In your precious name we pray. Amen. As the musicians are coming forward, we'll be reminded in the closing song, take the name of Jesus with you. Everything we observe at the table is meant to be taken with us. To tell the story of Jesus and his love. Let us stand and sing and dedicate our lives to taking the name of Jesus. so in remembrance of me. Lord, we come to the table saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord God, King of the universe, the very manna from heaven and the very blood that was spilled for our forgiveness. Thanks be to God. It is our tradition here to come forward to the table as we are invited if you're not able to come, we uh, will come to you. Uh, you just need to let us know. But may we be blessed and may we be reminded to invite others to this place that they may share in the story of Jesus and his love.
are brothers in the broken body of Christ. Bread represents the broken body of Christ. Give me you. I'm so grateful for those of you who are willing to kind of shift things up every so often. Uh, there were some shifts this morning with our musicians and some other things. and uh, it, It's wonderful to come in and say, let's just make this happen. And whatever happens, happens. You know, the grace of the Lord will be with us. And he, he doesn't require us to be perfect in our worship all the time. So... Uh, he simply asks us to remember what he has done and to say, Lord, may your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness be upon us and may we take it with us into the world. May we learn every day to tell the story. Sister Jean, would you lead us in the Lord's Prayer this morning? Sure. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bless me.
go and tell the story in the name of God the Father through the work of the Son and in the power of the Spirit till we gather again to celebrate what He has done. Go in His grace and mercy.